I built a berm and swell system in my backyard to capture and slow down rainfall. Citro, Texas got hammered with storms and rains and floods this year. I'm gonna show you how my berm and the swale system handled it. Uh, we're gonna talk about what worked, uh, what didn't, and uh, things that I would change or improve. This series is about turning a Bermuda lawn into a water resilient living landscape. We harvest rain, build healthy soil, but also keep the yard functional and DIY at the same time. This video is made possible by our patrons. Their support allows us to continue to share our educational resources, knowledge, and make these videos for you to enjoy. To get access to additional content from our projects, Q&A priority, and more, click the link below. Before we get into the floods and rain and how our berm and swale system performed, let's take a quick look at how this all works. In my yard, water comes from two main sources, mostly from the roof, and they come off two different sections, one here, and here, uh, ignore all of this for now. This is something we're gonna cover in a later episode. The water from this side collects off the roof into a French drain and a rain garden. So underneath here is a French drain. This goes into a corrugated pipe that runs the entire length of this side of the fence. And this side, before these rain barrels were here, used to go straight off the side and into my neighbor's French drain. This is one of two rainwater capture systems we've since installed on this project. Uh, we'll cover those in a later video, but what's important to know for this video is that water comes down in this rainwater system uh, and overflow, anything we can't catch, goes in this overflow pipe right down here all the way into this system and into the berm and swale system. And over here on the rain garden side, we've changed things a little bit too. So this used to be a corrugated pipe and French drain that ran all the way down the length of the property. But what we've done is we've gone to about right here. You can't really see it because it's buried underneath the frog fruit. Um, and we capped the corrugated pipe right here. We capped it with dirt and rock. And instead of it going the whole length, it actually empties into this basin here uh, through this frog fruit, which is actually rock underneath, down and into our berm and swale system. Also, you'll notice there's this big giant pad of Bermuda grass still. Uh, this is gonna eventually be a decomposed granite patio. Um, but that's something for a later date, and so we're just leaving it as it is for now. And that brings us to the main feature, the berm and swale system. To learn how I planned this and built this, uh, you can watch episode one and two, and just click the playlist button right there above me to watch everything. Water will overflow at one of the two points and then eventually make its way down into the berm and swale system. From here, it'll eventually flow all the way through this channel, hitting some check dams along the way, and reaching this basin here. Eventually this basin fills up, overflows over the backside of the berm that exists here. It's covered in foliage, down, out underneath the fence, and into a drainage ditch beyond the fence. And now from the other side, water overflows off this side, down into the French drain, through the corrugated pipe underneath the ground, hits this basin, is redirected underneath all this frog fruit, into the berm and swale complex and it runs all the way through some check dams keeps going keeps going keeps going hits this basin underneath the bird bath meets with the other one overflows and beyond the fence so this basin here is kind of the key part of the whole system um, the goal if you haven't watched episode one or two is not to send water from the top of my roof to the back fence as fast as possible. Instead, the uh, goal of the system is actually to slow water down. Um, you know, when it, we have these flood events and we get 18 inches of rain in 36 hours, not only do I wanna capture that water for irrigation in the form of rain barrels and other things, what I really wanna do is also take as much of that water as it's moving down the landscape, slow it down and try and get it to infiltrate into the ground. So this basin here is kind of the peak of that. So as both streams kind of converge here, this is about a foot to a foot and a half deep underneath me. Um, and that water basically pulls up and eventually it will overflow the berm behind me. But before it does that, I'm giving it as much time and opportunity to in-soak into the berms around it and fill, um, fill and you know, uh, hydrate and water all these beautiful plants you see around me right now. Another component of this is check dams. So it's kind of hard to see uh, because it's been overgrown by frog fruit and the plants that I've planted in them. But right here, the water hits this log, which I basically built a bunch of bigger rocks up underneath. And that is again to cause an area or to create an area where water pulls up and has a chance to stop before it overflows again 
Um, and what that's going to do is, again, allow that water to in soak and infiltrate into this side um, and also a little bit into here before eventually it overflows and continues down the stream. And you can see um, there's no irrigation in these middle sections where all this frog fruit, these uh, bicolor irises uh, and whatnot are at. Um, this is all natural. This, this is all from uh, rain um, and this is all because it is trapping water, keeping it here. And you can see just how freaking strong the growth is here. But uh, enough yapping. Let me show you what this system looked like during the July 4th and 5th floods, where we received roughly 18 to 20 inches of rain over 36 hours. Um, and as you watch these clips, let's play a fun little game. Uh, as you watch these clips, let's see if you can find some of the mistakes and or issues that I identified during these events. The creek itself held up amazingly. Uh, there's not really much scouring. There wasn't really much erosion. Uh, the water uh, sat where it was supposed to sit. Nothing blew out and uh, it all infiltrated down. Uh, so honestly, I don't know what else to say other than that it freaking worked. The overflow from the rain barrels worked perfectly or almost. Uh, as water comes through this, it hits these rain barrels and uh, once it reaches overflow, it goes through this pipe down straight and into the berm as mentioned before. Um, this was almost perfect. Uh, more on that in a second though. The other piece is that this main swale held up and did its job. Uh, if you've watched any of the previous videos, you know I've said multiple times how I was concerned about the biggest failure point of this entire system being uh, this blowing out in a freak storm. Uh, we got a freak storm, like I said, 18 to 20 inches in 36 hours uh, and not even a hint of erosion or blowout. So uh, I'm super stoked. That was my biggest fear because if this did blow out when it had, you know, a foot and a half of water in it, it's taking that whole fence out with it. Um, 
the strategy that I implemented to help with this was that I planted extremely densely uh, along the back side. You can see these beautiful moss. Um, uh, I ex planted extremely densely along the back side of this berm. Uh, I'll put some A and B footage here. Uh, and But basically all this ground cover, all these roots are going down, uh, locked this thing in place, kept it where it was supposed to go, and further helped with water sequestration. In this time lapse, you can actually see how much water is slowly infiltrating after the rain subsided. All of this water would have ran off my property and been lost to me forever had I not built this system. This rainwater garden performed almost exactly as intended. Uh, let me explain a little bit more about how this whole thing works. So after water hits the rainwater garden and moves underneath this corrugated pipe, as mentioned before, there's a cap here and it flows down the bourbon swale. However, I had a feeling and I had a hunch that in an extreme rainfall event, like the one we eventually ended up getting, that uh, there was going to always gonna be overflow here because the berm here is higher than this low section here. Additionally, I don't wanna necessarily send all of that rain down here in an extreme event because again, I don't wanna blow these berms out. I don't wanna mess any of this up. It did its job, it held up, but in a worst case scenario, I needed a fallback option. And so what I did is, where this cap is, this cap is set in a specific location. It's kind of hard to see here because it's underneath the frog fruit, but it's set in a specific location so that almost all water flows down through here. But in an extreme, extreme flood event, water will eventually overflow the cap and hit the corrugated pipe right here. And then will continue to flow all the way down and out the backside and onto improvements. So this is my rain barrel setup. I'm not gonna go too into the weeds on this. This is gonna be a topic for an entire other video. Uh, but the quick gist of this is that when you build a rain barrel or rainwater catching set, uh, setup, uh, your intake and your overflow need to be the same size. Um, and in this case, they are. They both use this three inch corrugated pipe. However, when I built this, and I kind of knew this when I built this, um, but it's a kind of problem for another day type deal, but. Long story short, three inch in, three inch out. However, they are constricted by this one to one and a half inch irrigation line in between. So what that means is, although there's three inches here to three inches out, there's a bottleneck in between, and that's how you end up with the overflow issue that we saw um, in the clip. Next up, back to the rain garden area. And so you can see all of this is actually on a slope from back there all the way down to the back of the fence line here, right? Um, and we do have a French drain that runs underneath here and tries to direct as much of that as possible. But in extreme rain events, there's still so much water running down this DG. Um, it actually runs past this where it would drain in and actually flows down. And you can actually see the scouring happening. Um, and it actually flows all the way down and eventually runs into there. It's okay for now. It doesn't really cause any major issues yet. However, if we're gonna turn all of this into a DG patio, that's gonna cause major scouring and erosion issues. So what that means is we need to kind of roughly update and redesign this section a little bit so that all overflow water is rolling down into the French drain and down that way, as opposed to coming down straight this way and taking DG with it. Now onto the two problems I didn't foresee. So this is obviously a Bermuda pad right now, and eventually this will be a DG patio. And what that means is when water hits this, it moves pretty quickly off. It doesn't really in soak and it goes down. I didn't really think about this or account for this. Um, I was so worried about a patio in the future that I'll fix later, whatever, that I didn't think about the Bermuda runoff. Uh, and what actually happens is, and you'll see it in the clip that I'm gonna play now, um, water runs off this and eventually effectively follows uh, the path of least resistance and actually pulls up right here um, and you know the problem with that is that it obviously then starts to overflow here these are these are garden beds there's soil underneath this and starts to move soil with it down in here it also waterlogs these plants and in general it's just not what we want we don't want water pooling here and taking soil and overflowing the the beds themselves so the solution is actually relatively simple uh, we're going to build a pond here uh, that was part of my design anyways so we'll build a little pond here um, to help catch that overflow um, and then i haven't figured out exactly how i'm going to do it yet but we're going to build uh, one two maybe even three little dry creek bed channels uh, in this kind of area to help push water flow uh, underneath or away or over into the beds or into the dry creek beds on the other side 
uh, so that they don't go over the beds. Uh, and this is actually going to become even more important when this gets turned into a DG patio. The Bermuda does a little bit of infiltration and slowing down, but once this becomes a DG patio, that water is coming right through and right down into here. And the last one, uh, you heard me mention this earlier when I said that um, it's good to plan for the future and it's good to think about things ahead of time. And when I built the overflow there, what I should have done is think about, hey, wait a minute, that's similar to over here. I didn't do that. Um, and that is what I noticed in uh, the July 4th, 5th floods that there is an issue here. So as you can see in the clip that's playing right now, uh, water also some uh, kind of reaches a, a summary here and flows down this walkway and this walkway goes from being a walkway to becoming a river. Now, thankfully, it's mostly frog fruit and then eventually grass. Um, and so it's not really destroying anything or pulling anything with it. It does eventually in soak. So it's not a, a major, major issue, so to speak. But I really don't want this to just become a giant floodplain every time it floods i'd love to kind of direct this water somewhere so and especially again as we build a dg wraparound from there all the way into the patio that infiltration and in water water is going to continue to sheet off so we need to think of a way to push water either down into my neighbor's french drain on the other side of this fence or push it down into here or infiltrate it down into here somewhere uh, and just try and in general avoid running streams of water over things that aren't dry creek beds. And that's it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we have some other stuff in the pipeline coming uh, outside of my backyard project, uh, but in the short term, I'm working on a video about all the plants that I've planted. Uh, if you guys wanna go learn about all the trees that I've planted, go watch episode three. Um, and uh, coming in the future on this project, we still have a pond to build, we have a patio to build. Um, so a lot of cool stuff coming and of course a lot of really big projects coming elsewhere in symbiosis as well So thank you guys for watching uh, and see you soon. All right. Hey, thanks guys Appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it And if you want to learn more about what we do how we do it why we do it You can hop over to our website. There's tons of good articles. You can join our newsletter You can follow us on YouTube Instagram and TikTok. We'd love to see you there and answer your questions. Thanks again Enjoy